Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode we're going to begin with trying to land a Kerbal on Minmus because we amazingly haven't done that or the moon yet. We've landed probes on those but we haven't actually landed Kerbals and brought them back yet. So gotta do that. We have a contract for Minmus but not for the moon. So I'll hold off on landing Kerbal on the moon until we get a contract for that. After that we have to look into sending a Kerbal, well, uh, Possibly sending a Kerbal over to Gilly and also sending a probe over to Eve. We'll see about that. Maybe we'll just send a probe to both, but it depends because I still got the part limit here and it costs 420,000 to upgrade the VAB in order to get the part limit above 30. So we'll see. Uh, it might be easier to send a probe over without uh, upgrading the. I mean, we've got the funds, but I like having some buffer. So anyway. Uh, first Minmus, and of course we need a pod with a parachute, very basic, and probably we can carry some more down with it. Um, so we could probably stop some other parachutes, and maybe we should carry the entire service module down instead of wasting it. So that's what I'm thinking. The thing about Minmus is, Minmus's gravity is about 1 of that of Kerbin's. So even if you take the lightest engine here, this uh, Rockamax 487S, um, on Kerbin, this will be able to lift 3 tons, right? Uh, 30 kilonewtons divided by roughly 10 for gravity. It's 9.81, but uh, we'll say divide by 10, so 3 tons. Um, that means that this little engine can lift 60 tons on Minmus. So uh, uh, you might want to give some buffer to that, say 50 tons, but still. The point is, uh, we could probably lift the entire rocket that we're going to launch at Minmus just with this little engine if we were actually launching on Minmus, but uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's pretty easy to land something on Minmus, as we've seen before with the probe, but uh, we can carry a lot of fuel in this uh, segment without worrying about whether we can uh, do what we need to do. Now, of course, we're going to need lander legs, and I'll go with four for now, though we might have to go to three depending on how much... Um, how many parts we have. And I'm gonna tuck these in a little bit. Oh, okay, offset, okay, 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 so uh, pressing F does this offset local thing. Okay, uh, let's try that again. So that's something I didn't know. So hold on, let's angle snap, now take that off, now offset, press offset. Okay, have you done offset local? Hmm. Okay, it is offset local. Okay. All right, I get it. Okay, so that's something we could do. We can switch what kind of offset we are doing. So this, then offset absolute offset local. Okay. All right, that's uh, that's a neat little trick. Oh, let me uh, show you my delta v budget for Minmus actually. But let me just arrange this. All right, so delta v budget for Minmus is like this. Uh, 4,500 for Kerbin orbit, 9, 000, uh, 950 for the Minmus transfer, 254 getting into orbit around Minmus, 354 landing on Minmus, 350 for getting back into orbit around Minmus, and then 300 for Kerbin transfer. I think that's pretty generous. Um, so I think that's plenty of buffer involved there. And uh, you'll notice in general, as long as there's no atmosphere, budgeting the same for landing and for orbit. Uh, usually you budget a little bit more for landing, just to be careful. Getting into orbit is not uh, quite as uh, tenuous a situation, so you might want to budget a little bit more for landings than for uh, getting back into orbit. But anyway, we're looking at around 6,700, and we'll have much more than that, I'm sure. Uh, let's just quickly see what this uh, stage actually has. So just in this stage here, we've got 2,565 meters per second. So that's that's how that shapes up. So we're not going to have too difficult a time getting to our delta V requirements. I'm not sure we need the antenna. We'll put it on for now. So basically this can on its own handle the transfer to Minmus, landing on Minmus, and a return without any trouble. Now I don't like the way the this engine creates its fairing a little bit too small. Wish they'd figure out a way to for us to just 
change what type of fairing, what size fairing goes on with the engine. So we could just manually right click it and say, hey, I want a 1.25 meter fairing, but uh, that might be asking for too much. All right, so now we've got a four ton little vehicle here and all we need is a launcher, something to get into orbit around Kerbin. So let's say we've got this. How much delta V does this have? Okay, so this has 3,292, which isn't enough. Not to get four tons into orbit, and I sort of figured that out. By the way, uh, generally, to get uh, anything into orbit, you're going to have a payload of about 12%, not, yeah, about 12% of the total launch mass of the vehicle. So, um, here we have 18.8 uh, .8 tons. So my first rough estimation for how much this launcher would be able to carry to orbit would be 18.8 uh, 18 .8 tons times 0.12, uh, 2.256 tons. So this payload is way too heavy for this launcher, assuming that we don't use any of the payload's own fuel to get into orbit. So that would be my first approximation on that, which means we should use side boosters. Let's orient them this way. Do we have a nose cone? Oh, we haven't unlocked the nose cone. Well, I'll, I'll unlock it now. Okay, and I'm gonna run fuel lines from these outside ones. Ah, uh, we're at the part limit now. Well, I don't see why we need an antenna. And let's just get rid of these. Uh, they're more cosmetic struts than anything else. Okay, now we're under. So, here's the question. How do you calculate the delta V for a stage like this? We've got two different types of engines here, though their ISP is not too different. This is 320 by 370, 320, 370, so it's the same ISP. Uh, but we've got two different types of engines. We've got these uh, fuel pods feeding into the center. So how do you calculate the delta V like this? Well, you calculate it uh, if the center stack isn't using any of its own fuel initially, which it isn't. If these fuel lines were off, then it would be burning its own fuel at the same time, and then it's a little bit more complicated. But as long as these, uh, the center stack is burning the fuel from these other pods first, uh, or in any case, only the fuel from the boosters is getting burned first, then you calculate the delta V for the boosters first. So what we do is, uh, we've got a 39.7 ton mass, Oh, uh, clear. Hmm. Oh, it doesn't like me typing it out. Okay. Okay, 39.7 ton mass. And we've got 4 ton, 4 ton, 4 ton, 4 tons for fuel here. So that's 16 tons. So the empty mass is 23.7 tons. And then the LN of 1.675 equals... And then I'm going to take the lower number for the ISP times 320 times 9.81. So that's 1619 meters per second. And then we've got the center stage, which we already calculated, but uh, I forgot the number. So let me calculate that quickly again. Using a slightly higher estimate for the ISP, I get 3410. So that'll definitely cover Kerbin orbit and part of the Minmus transfer, which is more than what we needed. We could probably go with a cheaper vehicle. I mean, if we used uh, LV-909, we'd have to use more engines, and that costs more. You can see these are, well, we're using these on the outside, 850 and this is 750, so using more engines isn't good. We could unlock the skipper, but that's like overpowered for this situation. Okay, well, let's talk about what happens if we use boosters and we are burning the center stage at the same time. Okay, let's set this aside for now. So what happens when you've got uh, something with a very different ISP in the center and you also have boosters? Why don't we have these decouplers unlocked? I think these are better. Definitely for the boosters, they are. Okay, so we just slap on four boosters, let's say. Maybe that'll do the trick. So let's see. Okay, so we've got the ISP of the boosters, and 
we've got the ISP of the the center engine. The way to do this is, and this is actually a center engine 200. The way to do this is you do the thrust weighted ISP. So let's bring up the notepad. Let's get rid of all this. It's 6,700 is what we need, and we'll definitely get there. But let's get rid of calculator because it always interferes with my clicking. All right. So the ISP of this engine, we'll say 320. 320 is the surface ISP, and its uh, thrust is 200. So I'm just going to do 320 times 200. Okay, and then I am going to, oh, the boosters are here. Uh, we got uh, 3 times 250, which is, not 3 times, 4 times 250, which is 1,000. And that's multiplied by 225. Okay, so what's that? And actually, I accidentally reversed. Uh, this was the ISP, this is the thrust, so I should put the ISP before the thrust here just to make that clear. ISP times total thrust, okay? And the total we get is uh, 289,000. Okay, and then we want to divide that by the total thrust, which is 1,000 plus 200, so that's 1,200. And so what is our average ISP for this? 240. We'll just say 240. And so we're going to use 240 here. And the question, though, is how long it's going to take these to burn out before we start uh, only having this stack's fuel. And that's a little bit trickier. That you'll use the burn time to figure out. The point is the initial... Uh, well, we could actually... Well, we actually have the burn time here. It says uh, 15 units per second, roughly, and we've got 433 units worth of fuel. So, 433 divided by 15.1, I think it was close to. So these things burn like for 28.6 seconds. So we're just going to calculate the delta V for the first 28.6 seconds. Okay, this burns 5.72 per second, and we know it's 28.6 seconds. 28.6 times 5.72 divided by 90. That's how much fuel we actually burn, 1.81 tons. And it already counts the oxidizer, by the way. So 1.82 tons, we'll say. Okay, all right, 1.82 tons from there. So when the boosters come off, got uh, 13 tons of fuel there, 1.82 tons in the center, so 14.82 tons. Whew. Okay, 14.82 tons. 34 divided by... 14.82 tons means there's 19.18 tons remaining. Okay, ln of 1.77 equals, all right, times 240 for the ISP times 9.81. Okay. So our delta V with the boosters here is 1,347. But then what's left in the center? We said that uh, we burned already 1.82 tons of that fuel. So these come off. Uh, these come off. And We'll say 17.1 tons is left. 17.1 tons divided by 1.82 tons. Well, we'll say 1.8 tons just for my my sanity. Um, so there's 12 tons minus 
1.8 tons is 10.2 tons. So that means 6.9 tons is the empty mass. Okay, ln of 2.47, just to be safe, times, I'll say 345 is the ISP of this after it gets to a sufficient height. Okay, so we get 3071. Now that's short of orbit, but we could probably have enough margin in the... No, we don't. No, 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 no. No, we don't. We do not have enough margin, I don't think. We could add a little bit of fuel. Because we burn like 1.8 tons so adding another ton here isn't gonna hurt the thrust weight ratio once we get to that point I didn't calculate the nose cones into the mass though I guess we'll take the risk nah I better not we need the launch clamps anyway okay so I think this will work we are going to, oh, yeah, I need two more parachutes. Wow, that throws off everything, actually. Uh, hmm. Yeah, this one parachute isn't going to be enough for everything. And batteries and stuff. Tell you what, uh, let's... I think I have to upgrade the VAB. Sorry if you couldn't uh, follow my calculations, by the way. Uh, that is a calculation I don't normally do. Okay, so I've upgraded the VAB. Yeah, uh, using the SRBs. I don't usually use the SRBs at all. So it's just not a calculation I do very often. I usually rely on engines that are very similar in ISP instead of having to do the thrust weighting and everything. Okay. So if we add mass, we're going to throw off our delta V. This is nice and cheap, though. Maybe you should use the bigger boosters. How much do they cost? Let me unlock them. 700 apiece. I think what I'll do is, for now, I'm going to swap the goo containers for parachutes. And then some batteries and some solar panels. Well, I guess we could uh, carry some lightweight uh, signs. Do we have uh, we have a thermometer? Okay, who are we going to send? I get I think all our pilots are relatively equal in competency right now, aren't they? Let's send Jeb. Heck. Okay, so uh, we're going to send Jeb Try not to kill him. And this is the way we're going to go. You know, thinking about it, I probably shouldn't even light this engine in the center until we get to altitude. That's got to change things a bit more, but that'll, that'll help, actually. We've got too much thrust initially anyway. I'm going to light it, but I'm going to throttle it back. That's what I'm going to do. And these don't need to be full throttle, but I can't... L let me recover vessel. Maybe I can throttle them back. Because, you see, we've got a mass of 35 tons. But right now, these engines, just the uh, boosters, can carry a total of 100 tons. So we can limit them to 50 and still be all right. And they're the only ones that need to be burning. But... I want to keep the center engine active be just in case uh, these boosters uh, end up having too much stress on this joint because there's no thrust coming from the center stack and they're bearing all the weight. There might be a lot of stress on the decoupler. And in that case, I can run the center engine in order to relieve that stress. So, And we'll probably do that right on launch, but uh, throttle back as we gain altitude and uh, there's less of a problem. All right. So that's one adjustment I'm going to make. Let's go. Okay, here we go with Jeb. Throttle up, SAS on. 
and launch. Okay, as expected, we don't need too much of a center sag, but let's keep an eye on the... And as you saw with the thrust weighting when trying to get the ISP for running both the center and these boosters, it's actually beneficial not to run the center uh, if you can help yourself. It's not really worthwhile. But then again, we need to run it a little bit just to burn off the fuel. Remember, we added uh, this ton. We really want to burn this ton off at least. A little bit of a roll to make sure those boosters fall off properly. Okay, here we go. Ooh. So I guess I don't have the decouplers fixed. Uh, there's a stock bug fix for those decouplers. Oh, I need to throttle up. That was a bad thing. Yep, that little time spent not throttled up has sort of ruined our trajectory a bit. I'll have to hang out here for a while. You can tell it's ruined our trajectory because we're not following the prograde vector down and this whole gap is gravity losses. Uh, we're out of fuel. So that wasn't good. Big mistake when decoupling the boosters. Okay, well, here we are. Let's see how it goes. Now, Minmus does have an inclination with respect to Kerbin. So we have to correct that, or at least correct some of it. But we won't do that close to Kerbin unless the ascending node or descending node is close to where we're going to do the maneuver anyway. Okay, so we are now in orbit around Kerbin. Let's see where we have to go to transfer to Minmus. Not there. It's going to be around here somewhere. And it's really our inclination that's causing us not to intercept it, I think. So on that basis, I'm going to select to adjust that at our descending node there. Let's give Jeb a return here. So uh, what's going to happen is if for some reason we can't make a Mimus landing, uh, Mimus's own gravity will send us back to Kerbin with a periapsis of 27 kilometers. And that's ideal. That would mean he'll re-enter properly. So this is a free return trajectory. And considering we've burned more fuel than we were supposed to, probably the free return trajectory is something we want to preserve. We don't want to leave Jeb stranded over at Mimus. We'll do a calculation, a delta V calculation, once we get close to Mimus to decide whether we can land or not. Okay, we're quite a bit off, aren't we? Well, let's see what this maneuver can do about that. Well, we'll have to spend a little bit more to keep that free return, but I'll do it. We'll spend about 30 meters per second more than we need just to get the encounter. But I think that's fair. Okay, out Jeb goes. Okay, try and get this right at least. Actually, we can just look at the periapsis side. This side. Hmm. Okay, well, sort of a return. Definitely will get captured by the atmosphere somehow. Alright. I think we'll say Jeb is safe to go. Safe being in tenuous quotes. Okay. Well, we are in Minmus Sphere of Influence. Let's see how much Delta V, delta v we've got. One. So, uh, 1222. Let us subtract getting into orbit. That's about 250. Let us subtract landing. Subtract takeoff. And that's enough for transfer back to Kerbin. Okay, uh, very close. We'll call it, uh, call it close enough.
this is costing more than I planned. I think. No, 250 is about right. So how about a crew report? Uh, I think I took off the... We could have transmitted that. I, I took off the antenna before we upgraded the VAB and I forgot to put it back on again, didn't I? Let me flip the craft around so I can see him. We gotta try an EVA. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, grab. Slide down, slide down, slide down. Don't do that. Okay, EV report. Okay, keep the data. Hi, over Mimis. So we haven't done that before. Okay, now SAS can be re-engaged. Should just put a, un, a, a probe core on there just so that SAS remains engaged. Alright, let's get into orbit. Okay, well we're in orbit. Can't say much for that right now. We we'll, we'll want to come down on this side, so I'm going to go around. Looks like we should aim for some highlands instead of uh, the flats. Try landing on this plateau here. Thankfully I did overestimate how much I would need for a landing and getting back into orbit around Minmus. Good thing to do that when you've got a Kerbal. Don't want to lose the Kerbal or leave him behind. Right now our trajectory passes us right over it and we are going to correct that momentarily. Here we go and we want surface speed. How far up are we? Still more than 3,000 meters according to the radar altimeter there. Still more than 3,000. You can't see the numbers because it's in the dark. But I remember where the numbers are, so that's why I've got that down. Let me just uh, hold it here until the radar altimeter actually budges. I haven't actually mentioned it in the series, but the radar, radar altimeter is the one that measures the distance above ground. This altimeter measures above nominal sea level or whatever the basis is on the planet that you're on. So uh, every planet has some sort of predetermined uh, location which is zero and so that's measuring from that predetermined location this is measuring from above ground okay it's budging so we are let's say 2500 meters above ground let's see thermometer yeah we'll keep that data for now probably grab it uh, Jeb will grab it now I know we haven't done EVAs in orbit around Minmus, but uh, that can be saved for a later time. Right now I just want to get this mission fulfilled. Especially since we're short of fuel and all, I'm a little bit worried. Oh, a little bit of a bounce, but it's alright. Okay, we have landed. But that's not what the contract asked for. The contract asked for uh, flag planting. Okay, just flop. Thank you, Jeb. So, let's figure out what biome we're at. EV report. We can't do surface samples yet. Lowlands, okay. Keep that data. So there's a uh, jib at the lowlands. And steady state. What inspiring words can we say? Hmm. We'll come up with something better next time. I sure hope so. Okay. Just just get that thermometer reading. Take data, take, take, take. Ah, oh, crying out loud. 
Oh, finally. Okay. Microgravity. You can keep it. Okay. So that's all in there. Oh, uh, we could uh, EVA grab the crew report and do a new crew report. Oh, stop drifting up. Take data. Okay, board. Crew reports. All right, keep data. Okay, now it's about getting him back home. Looks like we'll have to wait till the next episode for Eve at this rate. Sheesh. Didn't think it would take this long, but looks like it. So contract fulfilled, right? Yeah, contract fulfilled. Nothing else to do here. Not for now. Here we go. Now there's no benefit to waiting for the rotation around Minmus as long as you're clear of the mountains you're basically okay to go for going horizontal here. Okay here's orbit. And we just have to wait All right, so let's plot for home. Get the orientation right. We want to be headed this way, downwards. Not that much. Again, overestimate how much I'd need to return to Kerbin. I use the moon number rather than the Minmus number, actually. So, um, on return, you can see I've aligned my outward trajectory with the, with the trajectory of Minmus, right? Okay, now we've got a good periapsis. Uh, Kerbin's atmosphere will bring us down at that level. So that's fine. I don't think we can try to aim directly for the KSC with this thing. We'll just have to hope it's close by. But 161 is fine and we're going out there. Okay, exiting Minmosphere Influence after a successful landing and flag planting. The Mint Desert Moon has served us well this time. Okay, periapsis is as we expected it to be, so that is all right. There's Kerbin. I guess the KSC would be around here somewhere. We're going to be lying quite a ways away from it. Okay, I think parachute should be fine now. Okay, that's an okay speed, and we're clearly over water. Oop, flop. Ouch. Okay, recover vessel. So there you have it, uh, journey to Minmus with a Kerbal, a Kerbled mission to Minmus, with uh, one flaw in that uh, I didn't do the throttle up after releasing the boosters properly. I should have throttled up much quicker and lost a lot of Delta V like that. But otherwise, uh, successful. We had plenty of buffer in the mission in order to make it successful. And that was intentional because who knows what will happen. And of course, uh, if you guys are using the same numbers, it will give you the same kind of margin for error. So we got 100 signs from that. And we returned 4,100 funds. I think the craft was like 16,000 funds or something like that. So that's pretty good. 74.2%, uh, 500 kilometers away from the KSC. And Jeb gained 6 experience and is now at level 2. Amazing. Okay, so he's our first level 2 pilot, uh, appropriately enough. Let's take a look at the tech tree. 
Well, I mean, we're all filled out, uh, so there's nothing much we can do until we actually get enough funds to upgrade the, the research and development center, which is a million funds. So I guess we're going to have to do that Eve and Gilly contract in the next episode. So, yep, that'll be my plan. So um, this was just a Minmus episode, and we managed that all right. And so next time we're going to have an Eve and Gilly episode Probably just with probes, I think. We'll see. We'll see about that. Uh, maybe do a lot more stuff. Uh, is there a reason for me to... Uh, do we have to plant a flag on Gilly at all? Hmm. We'll see how the planets align, and maybe we can aim for a plant a flag on Duna soon as well. Okay. So with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.